Now, we'll update on security and custody in the SOC group is Sarah Rigby. Uh, right. Prior to COVID, the NEC had numerous strands of security work going through consultation. Uh, most of those are now being worked through again. I'll try and cover the more relevant ones uh, that will be more of interest to you, really. Uh, Richard Vince mentioned earlier, uh, there's been a recent change to the setup of the SOC team where the long-term high security estate has now been incorporated into the wider security group and has become the Directorate of Security headed by Richard Vince. There's no other planned structural changes within that group at present. Rollout of PARVA, rigid bar handcuffs and spear remains a high priority. This training should be incorporated into POELT courses from early next year. There were some changes made to the rollout criteria as a result of COVID as there were concerns about unrest and a reaction to the restrictions that were put in place. This led to an increase in the number of prisons with at least some staff carrying PARVA, but there's still a large training backlog to work through. The PARVA, rigid bar handcuffs and spear have all been combined into a review of PSO 1600 so that all use of force related guidance is in one place. We've been fully consulted and the final version of the new policy framework is now awaiting approval at director level. As you would expect, we took legal advice on it to, it to ensure it was fit for purpose. Apparently a possible sticking point is the two days refresher training requirement. Uh, they've agreed they'll come back to us if that element of the revised policy is rejected at director level. The new policy framework specifies that rigid bar handcuffs can and should be carried on external escorts and bed watches. They would not agree to PARVA being carried outside of the establishment. There's been a long overdue investment into through the gate procedures. The enhanced gate security project team have overseen the introduction of additional equipment into many of our closed establishments. This has been an ongoing project for some time now. Again, some of the delays have been due to COVID. The original investment amount was 100 million pounds, which included equipment costs, additional staffing, and any building work that was needed to facilitate it all. There has unfortunately been a delay on the X-ray baggage scanners. The latest update regarding the delay was that they've just received approval to start a new procurement exercise for the scanners. The original procurement process had to be abandoned following legal advice. We don't have any more detail on it than that. Uh, so as things stand, the enhanced gate security leads expect to be in a position to order the scanners in spring next year, with installation currently expected to be towards the end of next year. The expectation currently is that sites will operate the new systems with manual baggage searches until the scanners are in place. Uh, along with the enhanced gate security, there was some funding for mobile phone blockers, uh, and there's some ongoing work around drone use as well. They're looking into the possibility of using drones to protect prison perimeter fences and also trying to stop the illegal use of drones. 51 body scanners have also been rolled out and are proven to be effective at preventing illicit items from entering our prisons. There's been further investment into the counter-corruption unit, which is welcome, but it's a slightly different approach to the one we've been traditionally, traditionally used to. A lot of the corruption work is now done in area hubs and includes prison staff working alongside the police. Prisons now tend to deal with the lower level cases and are expected to refer more serious cases onto the area hubs for their support and input. We had mixed feelings about some of this, as whilst we welcome the long overdue investment, we had concerns that security departments within the prisons could end up de-skilled and a lot of the positions are not operational either, which we objected to. The counter-corruption strategy focuses on four strands, protect, prevent, pursue and prepare and the prevent strand, strand in particular moves beyond the detection and punishment of those involved in corruption and should begin to support staff by providing them with the skills and knowledge to avoid being drawn into corruption in the first place. It's hoped this will become a more proactive rather than a reactive approach. Uh, Dave Todd's already touched on the crime in prisons work, but I've just got a little more on it. Uh, that obviously also comes under the security Whitley remit. This work was paused during the pandemic, but the regular meetings have recently started again. And there's already some potential amendments to the crime in prisons agreement following some changes in legislation in relation to tax offenders and to make sure the agreement remains current and in line with new legislation. This is likely to be taken forward in the new year as Jonathan Paul's review into the management of tax offenders following the Fishmonger Hall attack could make some recommendations that will be relevant to the agreement. The Crime and Prisons meeting includes prison representatives, police and the CPS, so it's imperative we continue our work in this area. 
to ensure that prison staff have a voice and that we can continue to push for better outcomes for our members who are victims of crime in prisons. The Crime in Prisons guidance highlights that all prisons should have a nominated SPOC to manage the agreement and to make sure it's working effectively. But currently this is unprofiled and in reality it's just going to end up being an add-on job for somebody who's already got too much work to do. We'll continue to highlight this as discussions continue. Uh, a couple of other things worth a quick mention include safety in staff car parks. There's been some quite significant incidents that have taken place within our car parks in the last couple of years. It was only right that we raised concerns over this and asked that some action was taken to try and ensure staff and their vehicles were safe when they were parked at work and were walking to and from the prison gate. Governors will be required to investigate these incidents and to carry out risk assessments to see what actions can be taken to reduce the risk in the first place. Uh, a CCTV policy has now been introduced following the POA raising concerns about how CCTV was being incorrectly used to monitor and supervise staff. This was raised with us by several establishments and when we escalated their concerns it became apparent there was no policy in place to prevent the systems from being abused. The new policy has now been published following our input and this should help to protect our members. We also took legal advice on that one to make sure the policy was compliant with current GDPR legislation. Uh, finally, a vetting renewal programme for all directly employed staff is due to commence and will be carried out across all of our prisons. It actually began last week at Cardiff and made a really strong start with the award-winning shared services sending out the wrong form. This is currently being addressed and each member of staff will be resent the correct version. Uh, it's a long-term project, expecting to take around seven years, but could take longer. It's something shared services have always been contracted to do, but have not yet completed to date. The organisation are no longer comfortable carrying the risk following reporting in the media around vetting processes for the police and other government agencies. Staff are required to declare any convictions. If it turns out they have not done that, an investigation will be commissioned. In 2012, they did a vetting renewal pilot, which covered eight prisons and 2,000 people who were all logged as holding assumed vetting. So the exercise highlighted that around 7% of staff had an offence recorded against them. Most were low level, but a small number of staff had more serious offences recorded against them that were classed as gross misconduct. Considering the results of the pilot, it's probably safe to say that some of you are going to end up representing members as that programme progresses. Uh, current ongoing work, again, includes updating the national security framework. So far, we've looked at conveyancing. There'll be some additional training into searching rolled out after concerns have been raised about the quality of searching currently being carried out. We are also expecting a review into the segregation policy to commence and there'll be a refresh of the body one video camera policy with new updated cameras. Uh, various other strands of work are being progressed. We've not, had, not yet had confirmation of what has been awarded to the department on the back of the spending review. This will undoubtedly influence which work within the direct, directorate of security has progressed over the next couple of years. That's it. Thank you.